by the NIH. The collaboration between the U.S. and the Wuhan Virology Institute continues. Doctors Barrick and Xi worked together to insert bat virus spike protein into the backbone of the deadly SARS virus and then used this man-made supervirus to infect human airway cells. Think about that for a moment. The SARS virus had a 15% mortality. We're fighting a pandemic that has about a 1% mortality. Can you imagine if a SARS virus that's been juiced up and had viral proteins added to it, to the spike protein, if that were released accidentally? Dr. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are entire, entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Do they fund Dr. Barrick? We do not fund. Do you fund gain, Dr. Barrick's gain of function research? D Dr. Barrett does not do in gain of function research, and if it is, it's according to the guidelines, and it is being conducted in North Carolina. Not you don't think inserting in a bat virus spike protein that he got from the Wuhan Institute into the SARS virus is gain of function? That is you would not be in the minority because at least 200 scientists have signed a statement from the Cambridge Working yeah. Group saying that it is gain of function. Well, it is not. And if you look at the grant and you look at the uh, progress reports, it is not gain of function, despite the fact that people tweet that. So do you still support it? sending money to the Wuhan Virology Institute? We do not send money now to the, the Wuhan uh, Virology Institute. Do you support Institute. sending money? We did, under your tutelage. We were sending it through EcoHealth. It was a sub-agency right. and a sub-grant. Do you support that the money from NIH that was going to the Wuhan Institute? Let me explain to you why that was done. The SARS-CoV-1 originated in bats in China. It would have been irresponsible of us if we did not investigate the bat viruses and the serology to see who might have been or, infected in China. Or perhaps it would be irresponsible China. to send it to the Chinese government that we may not be able to trust with this uh, knowledge and with this uh, incredibly dangerous viruses. Government scientists like yourself who favor gain-of-function research. I don't favor gain-of-function research in China. You are saying things that are not correct. Government defenders of gain-of-function, such as yourself, say that COVID-19 uh, mutations were random and not designed by man. But interestingly, the technique that Dr. Barrick developed forces mutations by serial passage through cell culture that the mutations appear to be natural. In fact, Dr. Barrick named the technique the noceum technique because the mutations appear naturally. Nicholas Baker in the New York Magazine said, nobody would know if the virus had been fabricated in a laboratory or grown in nature. Government authorities in the U.S., including yourself, unequivocally deny that COVID-19 could have escaped a lab. But even Dr. Xi in Wuhan wasn't so sure. According to Nicholas Baker, Dr. Xi wondered, could this new virus have come from her own laboratory? She checked her records frantically and found no matches. That really took a load off my mind, she said. I had not slept for days. The director of the gain-of-function research in Wuhan couldn't sleep because she was terrified that it might be in her lab. Dr. Barrick, an advocate of gain-of-function research, admits the main problem that the Institute of Virology has is the outbreak occurred in close proximity. What are the odds? Barrick responded, could you rule out a laboratory escape? The answer in this case is probably not. Will you in front of this group categorically say that the COVID-19 could not have occurred through serial passage in a laboratory? I do not have any accounting of what the Chinese may have done, and I'm fully in favor of any further investigation of what went on in China. However, I will repeat again, the NIH and NIAID categorically has not funded gain-of-function research to be conducted in the Wuhan Institute but of Virology. You do support it in the U.S. We have 11 labs doing it, and you have allowed it here. We have a committee to do it, but the committee has granted every exemption. You're 
you're fooling with Mother Nature here. You're allowing super viruses to be created with a 15% mortality. It's very dangerous. I think it was a huge mistake to share this with China, and it's a huge mistake to allow this to continue in the United States. And we should be very careful to investigate where this virus came from. I fully agree that you should investigate where the virus came from. But again, we have not funded gain-of-function research on this virus in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, no matter you're how parsing many times words, you're parsing you say words. it, there it was didn't research, happen. There was research done with Dr. Xi and Dr. Barrick. They have collaborated on gain-of-function research where they enhanced the SARS virus to infect human airway cells, and they did it by merging a new spike protein on it. That is gain-of-function. That was joint research between the Wuhan Institute and Dr. Barrick, you can't deny it. Senator Paul, your time, time has expired. Dr. Fauci, I will let you respond to that. When we need to move on. Excuse me? You're, I will allow you to respond to that, and then we'll move on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say, we, I, I don't know how many times I can say it, Madam Chair. We did not fund gain-of-function research to be conducted in the Wuhan Institute of Virology.